Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this has been brought to my attention uh, by Ed Finninger lately, and he's been talking about this a lot, how Robert Breaker has written this article on interracial marriage, and so uh, I've never really read all the way through this thing. I kind of skimmed over it the other day, so I made I thought I'd make a video, just read through the whole thing, share it with everybody, share some thoughts. And, uh, you know, since I started making videos, at the very beginning, you know, I was talking about Brian Denlinger, and how I didn't agree with the things that he was teaching. And it wasn't too much longer that I came across Robert Breaker, and uh, same thing with him. And really, they believe a lot of the similar things. And, uh, you know, most people who know anything about Brian Denlinger know that he has came out against interracial marriage, and it appears that Robert Breaker is the same boat as that. And, uh... Robert Breaker likes to say that it's just a personal preference or whatever, but he's written this article where he tries to use the Bible to defend his position. And so he's saying, you know, this is a scriptural position. But again, you know, there's lots of things that have bothered me about Brian Denlinger and uh, Robert Breaker, uh, how they teach dispensational salvation. They teach that people are saved by works in the Old Testament is foolish. And, uh, you know, even uh, even though I don't really consider myself a dispensationalist anymore, even the classical dispensationalists, you know, they don't they don't they wouldn't agree with the things that they're teaching. Brian Denlinger and uh, Robert Breaker are, are both Ruckmanites. They both follow the teachings of Peter Ruckman. They regard him really highly as a Bible teacher. And actually, Robert Breaker studied underneath of him. He went to uh, one of his schools or whatever. And, uh, you know, so they have all Peter Ruckman's books and videos, and, uh, you know, he was very bizarre. He taught so many bizarre false doctrines, and uh, so they, they ascribe to a lot of that. And then they've taken it to a new level where they just teach even weirder things. And so they're, they're wrong and ignorant in so many areas, even, you know, they mess up just basic beliefs. You know, now Brian Denley is saying that Jesus is God the Father, and... Uh, I think that's something that Peter Ruckman didn't teach, and that's something that Breaker doesn't teach, but they both have their own strange doctrines, and uh, <clears throat> so it's nothing new for me, really, to be talking about Robert Breaker. Anyways, I guess this was written in 2000, or copywritten, by Robert Breaker III. Uh, so let's just go through it, I guess. This article's been designed to be printer-friendly. So feel free to print the entire thing and read through it. Otherwise, just read it here online. I'm going to read it and record it and post it on YouTube so everybody can see this and hear it. So this is Robert Breaker wrote this. The same Robert Breaker who does all those whiteboard videos, doing all the diagrams, the Peter Ruckman charts. <laughs> no, and I remember too, like when, when I first started, when I came across him, he was relatively new not like at the very beginning of his ministry i didn't catch him then but i saw him like rising up you know way before he had all the subscribers that he does now but i knew that people were going to catch on to it like wildfire just because of his delivery and what he was doing and stuff and uh you can see why easily but uh when you actually listen to his teachings and stuff they're the most confusing craziest teachings you've, you've heard As an unmarried gringo missionary to Honduras, I've been told many times by many different members of the churches that I have visited that maybe I would get married in Honduras to a beautiful Honduran girl. Every time I was told, I nicely and respectfully replied that I had no plans to do so, as I personally don't believe in interracial marriage. Okay, now, and I forgot to say what I'm going to mention, what I'm going to probably... Uh, title of this video is, you know, is Robert Breaker a racist? And, you know, that's something that I don't like being thrown around lightly. Everybody wants to call everybody else a racist these days. I've been called it myself. Actually, you know, I may have said uh, something that would be deemed racist, but it was uh, basically when I used to work at Taco Bell, and uh, I worked with lots of different races there, and I got along with everybody as far as I knew. I was trying to be nice to everybody and stuff, even way before I was saved. 
And, uh, you know, there was a show on Comedy Central, the Dave Chappelle show, and uh, it was, you know, really racist comedy. Uh, but he poked fun at all the different races and stuff and whatever, and I used to be a fan of it. I thought it was really funny. But there was, like, a Mexican guy who... Uh, would quote it, like, all day long. He'd be saying this racist stuff from the Chappelle show or whatever. And, uh, you know, I I said some stuff that was, you know, probably stupid, but uh, it was racial, but I tried to do it in a joking manner and uh, to him because I thought, you know, he's saying all this stuff and so he wouldn't be offended by it or whatever. And, like, instantly when I said it, he instantly got offended. And uh, I was like, what? <laughs> How are you offended when you're saying all this offensive stuff, you know, all day? It didn't really make sense to me, but he got offended, and he told the manager, and, and so everybody, uh, all the black people I worked with, they, uh, you know, they thought that I was racist, and uh, I apologized to everybody, and, you know, I almost lost my job. It wasn't much longer. I just quit that job, but uh, that's probably the biggest time that, you know, people try to consider me racist. And I've had lots of different friends of different races, and I was really kind of taken back that, you know, how, how nice I was to everybody, and then instantly, because of something that I said, you know, uh, in a joking manner or whatever, that they, uh, they all questioned, you know, <laughs> like, whatever, but, so this is something seemingly, and some of the things that he says in here, is really questionable, you know, uh, you know, is this something that you could consider somebody as a racist for? They don't they don't believe in interracial marriage. To go as far as to say that the Bible is against it. And some of the other things that are said in here. But let's continue. Then I would quickly explain that it was a personal conviction of mine <laughs> that I planned to keep steadfastly. I certainly didn't want them to get the impression that I was a bigot or racist against the Honduran people. I love them with all my heart, but I did want I did want them to know that I have convictions against such a thing. Usually they would understand, but one time I was asked the following question, well, can you show me anywhere in the Bible that says you can't do it? Several thoughts raced through my mind, but when I answered the brother, he would not listen. I soon found out that he had married a woman of another race, and from that day forward... I decided I would search the scriptures, John 5.39, and find out more about the subject. I did not want my conviction to be just an opinion or preference, but I wanted to know more about what the Bible said about this topic. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if it's annoying when I drink when I make these videos, but it is early in the morning. I just woke up, made some coffee, so... Can I get a little more pick-me-up? I'm a southerner from, from Florida, and the typical excuse is that we are all bigots down south anyway, but as a Christian, I want to know more about what God says concerning the subject and make sure my convictions line up with the Word of God. I want to know that I believe what I believe because I got it from God's Word and not because the culture I came from was against it. So, after much study, prayer, and even talking to many different couples that were interracially married, I learned for myself why I personally have no intentions of marrying outside my race. I am what God made me, and I want to marry someone like I want to marry that someone that is like myself, and together I want for us to have children of our own race that will do the same. And uh, to get a little bit off subject here, I just wanted to say that Breaker gets off subject majorly in his videos because. I'm working on, you know, commentary through Philippians, and I'm looking at some different people's commentaries online, uh, including, you know, on YouTube, some people's videos. I've, looked, I've listened to ex-Catholics because they've done a lot of expositories, so it's easy to go through, see what they've said about the, the chapters, and then Robert Baker, you know, he's been working his way through the Bible, too. And he has Philippians cut up into two sections. In one video, he goes through like the first four verses, and the, the other video goes through the rest, something like that. And uh, <clears throat> both of his videos are like over an hour, 
And so the one where he goes through only like four verses in Philippians in the first one, he gets so far off track in that video. It's like, you know, is this even an expository on Philippians? It's just, uh, wow. It, when you listen to his videos, it just, to me, they just drive me crazy. It's hard to make myself sit through them, but anyway, now before I start this article, I feel that I must, must say the following, as interracial marriage is a hot topic in this day and age, it is one of the several taboo subjects in this effeminate modern society of non-offensiveness. Uh, I see. And to believe as I do is frowned upon by college-educated people who are supposed to have an open mind. While they claim to be open to all ideas, they are definitely closed to the Bible in the old-time way. They claim to tolerate all views, but they certainly do not like to entertain thoughts of the old ideals once revered and loved by our forefathers, so they will probably accuse me of believing in outdated Victorian morals or dogmas. That is fine with me, as long as my dogmas, morals, and beliefs are from the Bible. Um, so he's grouping in people who are against interracial marriage into this political correctness uh, stuff. And I'm not for political correctness, and I'm not for interracial... I'm not for being against interracial marriage either, so... The world's affections are not on the old past, but on the new ideals. Acts 17.21. Oh, how they embrace them, evolution, communism, humanism, etc. I'm curious about what Acts 17.21 says. So let's just see what that says. Acts 17.21. For all the Athenians and strangers which, they, which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Okay. And so now it seems like he's kind of lumping in people who believe in evolution and communism and humanism are the same people who are uh, for interracial marriage. Their push is for a one-world system where all can come under, can come together under the umbrella of love. They want to get together by what they have in common and not discriminate their differences. And because of this push on unity, those that do point out differences and do not go along with society's goals are branded as fundamentalists, fuddy-duddies, and right-leaning extremists. And because of the satanic push, for all mankind to come together, the Tower of Babel all over again. And so now he's kind of saying it's satanic if you're for interracial marriage. One who approaches such a subject as this will usually be branded as extremist or separatist and made out to be a devil by the secular news media, but I never have been one to give up my beliefs and go along with others. If you have beliefs, that's fine, but if you try to tell me what I can and can't believe. Let me see, how many... We're like four paragraphs in and he hasn't gotten to anything about how interracial marriage is condemned by scripture. Fifth uh, paragraph. Supposedly, we are granted freedom of speech to express our views on the Constitution of the United States of America, but it seems these days are long gone. Nowadays, if you express a view contrary to popular opinion, you are accused of hate speech and a lack of love for others. So I want the reader to know that my motive is not to preach hatred towards those of another race, but simply to show from the Bible why I believe what I believe on the issue, on this issue. Okay, then get to it. Also, let me say I am approaching the subject with utmost care, but I am not afraid of what others think. Well, good for you. I only care what God thinks. And my job as a Christian. 
and even more as a missionary is to please God. So with all that said, let's look at four reasons why I personally am not for interracial marriage. Here we go. The first reason that I have for not wanting to be married interracially is for historical reasons. Let me explain. God is the author of history. It is his story. And in history, God is a God of division. Uh, see, this is just where he just gets bizarre and weird. 69 times in 66 verses in the King James Bible, the Holy Spirit uses the word divided. And 49 times in 46 verses, we find the word divide. And as we read these references, we find that God divided some things. The broader breaker divides way too many things. That's all of his teachings. That's all they are. Is, you know, I was watching one the other day. I don't know which. It was one of his most recent ones on Acts or whatever. He's like, well, in this, uh, in this time during the church age, it was all about having trust in God or something. And in this time of the church age, it was all about having faith in God. It's like, it's like there's different gods at different times or something. And no, 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 no. And, you know, he says at one point in Acts, people were saved by water baptism. And at another point in Acts, they were saved by faith in Jesus. No, I'm sorry. It's always been the same. It's always the same God. And he's making way too many divisions. And his videos are just confusing and wrong and heretical. Anyway, uh... And in, in, in creation, Genesis 1 4, God divided the light from the darkness. In Genesis 1 7, he divided the water from the firmament. In Genesis 1 14, God made the light to divide the night from the day. Genesis 10 5, we find that the isles of Gentiles were divided. In Genesis 10 25, the nations were divided, and on and on. God is a God of division. But specifically, let's look at Acts 17 26 27. Concerning the races, as this is our topic, it states, verse 26, 27, And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Clearly we see that God set up boundaries, divisions of land, for all men, the races, to dwell in. And according to the last verse, he did this for one reason. For them to seek after him. Now from history you'll remember that man didn't like God's way, division, so they got together in Genesis chapter 11, tried to build up, build a tower into heaven to tell God about it. And what did God do? In verse 8 of the same chapter, God divided them again, showing man he wanted them separated, one race from another. He doesn't want them to come together because when they do, they become prideful and want a name for themselves and try to overthrow God as a God of division. God is a God of, God of division. Uh... You know, I will, I'll probably go over this stuff in more detail in another video because we're already almost at 20 minutes here and I'm just kind of trying to read through this. But, you know, a lot of this is nonsense about God being a God of division and, and using that as a reason to be against interracial marriage. It talks about God setting the bounds of their habitation, um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that people are restricted to bounds. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'm going to go over the commentaries really to, to understand that verse better. Also, with the story, him using the story of the Tower of Babel, I think uh, that have more to do with uh, people trying to reach God or whatever. Um, I think it had more to do with that than the people coming together. Uh, but maybe like the pride that they had, thinking they could could get to God. You know, that's something I got to look into more again. Uh, 
anyways, e using either one of those, or any 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 of these three really reasons, uh, God being a God of division, God setting you know bounds and the Tower of Babel, or whatever, none of that stuff is really any kind of a uh, defense for what he's saying. But let's continue. Now as we continue on in Genesis studying history, we begin to see that men did indeed go back to the habitations and were separated in their races for a time. But as we come to chapters 14, 15, 16 and on, we learn that they again began to intermingle. And we find some interracial marriage occurring. Just about every time it occurs in the Old Testament, something bad happens or goes along with it. First, we find Abraham marrying an Egyptian woman and having a child by her. And this child, Ishmael, ended up mocking God. We read about Lot marrying an Egyptian and becoming the first type of backslidden Christian in the Bible. Not only that, he has two bastard children from his worldly Egyptian daughters. Egypt is a type of the world in the Bible. And the descendants of these two children, Ammon and Moab, and provished, attacked, and murdered many Israelites throughout the Bible. You see that Isaac had a son named Esau, who through interracial marriage produced Edomites, and they became enemies of Israel, not to mention the hatred of God. We learn that Jacob, having two wives that were his wives' handsmaids, and they produced children by that by them that sold captivity into sin. So is he trying to say that uh, he's trying to say that these these cases were interracial marriage, but doesn't it really have to do more with a believer marrying a pagan? I think that's what it has to do with uh, not <clears throat> not the fact that they were interracially married, but the you know one was a believer and some weren't. In Kings and Chronicles, we read all about Solomon and how outlandish women of other races caused him to sin. Yeah, they were non-believers. They were pagans. They worshipped other gods. It has nothing to do with their race. In Ezra 10.2, we find that Israelites confessing their sin. And I mean, see, this is just dishonest. I mean, either it is really, either Robert Breaker is really foolish and ignorant, and he doesn't see that this is wrong, or, you know, he's just being dishonest and a deceiver, you know, uh, and this is like what pretty much all of his teachings are like, you know, is you have to catch him on all these things, and, and he is subtle. Just the way that he talks, and the way that he dresses, and the way that he acts, and the way that he does his videos, it just draws in people, and he can just say whatever he wants to say, and it just slips on by, you know, the most inaccurate teachings you've ever heard. The most bizarre stuff. We find the Israelites confessing their sin of marrying wives of another race and getting it getting right. Nehemiah 13, 23, 25, Nehemiah smoked, contended with, and cursed out those he had married outside of their race because it led them into the worship of the false gods. And on and on and on. The point I want to make is that usually in the Bible, and there are some cases where good does come of it. Something bad happens when interracial marriage occurs. For these historical reasons, I am not for interracial marriage. I would rather learn from the mistakes of others and then make some of my own. And from the lesson of history, I'd rather not do this thing. Now we're going on to the second reason. So the first reason we can put a big old X through that is completely not accurate. That's not a biblical reason to be against interracial marriage. Second reason I don't care too much for the idea of marrying outside my race is that heritage is broken. You'll remember that when Israel began to go into captivity, it was because they had left God. And the reason that they left God is because they joined themselves with the people of other lands and gave their daughters to them in marriage and took their daughters unto themselves to wed. And the, when, when this occurred, they forsook the true God of Israel and took the false gods of the heathen. Thus Israel went into apostasy by doing exactly what God told them not to do, Exodus 34.16, also Judges 
You know, and again, this is like the same thing that he just said again. It has to do with the believers going into the pagans, not one race to another. That's not the uh, the main idea there. And I'm surprised by how long this is already that we're at 25 minutes in. And I know I've wasted some time saying other things, but this is a pretty long article. I mean, it's not really, really long, but it's long enough. Filled with lies. <laughs> This disobedience caused not only God's judgment to fall on Israel, but it made many to lose their heritage. In Ezra 2.62, it is stated that those Jews who had over the years married with the heathen and could not find their genealogy to prove that they were of Jewish descent were put forth as polluted, and never again were they allowed the con into the congregation of Israel as God's chosen people. They lost, they lost their heritage. How sad a thing it is when a heritage is broken. And I said to, uh, I, put, I commented on Ed when he was talking about this, that, you know, didn't Paul say that he counted his, basically his heritage and, and all that as dung uh, for the knowledge of Christ? He says that he was a Jew of Jews, you know. Um, he was circumcised on the eighth day or whatever. You know, I'm getting that wrong, I'm sure. But basically, uh, you know, Paul said that none of that past mattered. You know, it's all about knowing Jesus. Um, and so let's look at the New Testament, too, you know. And, I mean, first of all, like I said, Robert Breaker, he's, he's confusing interracial marriage with believers going after the pagans. He's also using the Old Testament a lot where, you know, uh, God tried to keep, you know, he had all these purposes for the Jewish people, uh, you know, and they were to bring into the Messiah into the world, and so their lineage and everything had to be right and all that stuff. And it's just like Stephen Anderson going to the Old Testament and to the law and stuff and saying that sodomites should be killed because it said so in the Old Testament. You know, when uh, that was for a certain purpose back then. But, you know, we're not under the law, and we're supposed to uh, try to get along with everybody peaceably, and we're supposed to, you know, try to love everybody and to to reach the lost, everybody. So, you know, there's nothing about killing sodomites in the New Testament, okay? And so... Robert Breaker is, like, confusing things on multiple levels here. <laughs> but, yeah, the heritage being broken, I mean, that's something that's of this earth that, uh, in the end, it doesn't matter. And <clears throat> our, our, you know, our home is in heaven. That's where we're supposed to be focused on. Another reason I'm not fond of the idea of interracial marriage is that it breeds hatred in the hearts of many. Wow, okay. When there's interracial marriage, hatred is spawned. It's sad that this is so, but it, it's true. Many people of different backgrounds and races deep down resent others coming and taking their daughters or sons. They look at it as something that is wrong. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, the same thing could be said about this article. I mean, when somebody comes out against interracial marriage, that makes a lot of people angry. So this is just a, another stupid, stupid, stupid reason. But let's continue. They look at it as something that is wrong. In the South, a black man marrying a white woman is frowned upon and almost looked upon as sin. In some Asian countries, many women have been cut off from their families for marrying a white man because they have forsaken their race and their heritage. <clears throat> well, that's wrong in their family. In many families in America, a man that marries a wife of full-blooded foreign descent is looked upon as the black sheep of the family. This is a very real thing indeed, and many do not accept, and yeah, even hate, marriage between two people of different races. Let's look at a few Bible examples of this. Okay, more twisting scripture. In Genesis chapter 21, we find Sarah angry with the son of Hagar. 
an Egyptian, and Abraham. In her hatred, she tells Abraham to cast them both out and away from her sight. The Bible tells us it was a grievous thing to Abraham. Genesis 43, 32, we find some more racial tension. The Bible says the Egyptians hated the Jews so much that it was an abomination to eat with them. Looking at Nehemiah again, we find that he is angry with and hates those that married the daughter of the heathen. In Exodus 34, 14 through 16, God commands Israel not to marry outside of their Jewish heritage because God is a jealous God. And Malachi 2, 11, 12, we see God's anger and wrath upon Israel for her disobedience and marrying the daughters of a strange God. And so the list goes on. It's an unfortunate thing, but it's a fact when interracial marriage happens, hate respond. Again, it's the same thing. He uses these verses that are talking about believers getting with unbelievers, you know, the Jews getting with the pagans, and using that as some kind of a proof against interracial marriage. It doesn't follow through. Finally, I guess we're on the fourth reason here. I want to say that when there is interracial marriage and children are produced, it is harder for them to get saved. Now this one is just even further stupid. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, I've seen many families that consisted of a man and a woman from different races. I've watched them and asked them about it. And here, if you don't see it, I mean, it's bold there, but you can see. I want to say that when there's interracial marriage and children are produced, it is harder for them to get saved. Those are the words of Robert Breaker, the third. Several of the men told me that they had to do it over, if they had to do it over again, they would have married someone of their own race as something deep within them longed and for desired someone like themselves. Others said they were as happy as they could be and loved their wife and never had any problems. But with all of them, I looked at the children. These kids had no heritage. They were part of, they were part one thing and part something else. And the question they had more often than not was, who am I supposed to marry? Some of them turned out to be bitter and angry at their parents for making them a half-breed. And I was just watching a video uh, of Robert Breaker, and I think it was the Philippians one. It was one of those Philippians expository studies. And he said that himself, that he said, oh, I'm not a racist. He said, actually, like, I'm a, a mix of a bunch of different things myself. He said that he was uh, part German and his mother is part Jew and whatever else. And he's like, well, so I'm like a mutt. Okay. And he claims that he's saved. So, I don't know. Anyways, I don't want to, you know, come up with some kind of stupid thing either. God, it's just so foolish, man. And that's why I think I'm going to title this video, actually. Robert, is Robert Baker a racist or just a fool? Because it's one or the other. Okay. Now, back to what I was saying. Because I was going to kind of say, well, he's not saying it's impossible for them getting saved. He's saying it's harder for them to get saved yet. No, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Some of them turned out to be bitter and angry at their parents for making them a half-breed. Others were concerned about finding the perfect mate in fundamental circles, as many a pastor preaches against interracial marriage. Then some of them, well, yeah, that's the fundamentalists preach against a lot of stuff that the Bible doesn't. Then some of them were just as worldly as sin, didn't go to church because one parent was unsaved and was involved with another faith. It has nothing to do with their race whatsoever. Now I'm going to have to move my video because it's in the way. It's interesting too. I wonder if he used to go to church at this time because he, you know, he makes going to church a big deal here. And while studying these children, the more I looked, the less I found that were saved. 
Of the few that were saved, even fewer were living for the Lord. The ones I did find usually seemed to be bitter and unhappy with their predicament and with who they were. I have a Christian friend who is half German and half Korean. One day he asked me, Brother Breaker, who am I supposed to marry? There aren't many German Koreans running around. How sad I am to see these things. And, you know, the more that I looked around, the less that I found that were saved. Well, that's because, you know, the majority of the world is lost. I think that a best person, I think, I think that the best a person could do before they get married is to pray and ask God to send them someone like themselves. And they ought to do this for the sake of their children. Many a child has become bitter and mad at God for who and what they are. Never come to the saving knowledge of the truth. But on the side, on the other side of the coin, thank God for those few who have been saved. Also, let me say, I hope that we as Christians will not look down upon others who are of a different race than us, or even if they are of mixed descent. My prayer is that when it comes to salvation, we'll always look at them as God does on the inside, as a soul that needs to be saved. But when it comes to marriage, we must realize that each race is, is different. Not better or worse than others, but different, and if God made the races different, divided them, and told them not to intermingle, he must have had a reason for it. So this is the end of the article about interracial marriage. I believe that I've been as thorough as I can be in the short space allowed me, and I trust you've seen that I have written with a clean heart and a pure motive. I'll give you reasons I'm personally not for interracial marriage. I hope that you have learned something that will help you edify you and your Christian life, and I ask you to pray for me that God would send me a goodly, godly, dedicated Christian wife of my same race who wants to serve God and live for him. Thank you for your patience in reading this article on Good Day. He talks about not looking down on people of a different race or whatever, but then he says that pe people, children who are produced of an interracial marriage are harder to get saved. That's probably one of the most racist things in this article that I would say. And then uh, the rest of it's just like bib biblical inaccuracy, you know, interpreting the scriptures totally wrong. Obviously, in the New Testament, you know, <clears throat> the only thing that uh, we really read about marriage is, you know, don't marry somebody who's a non-believer. That's the same message that we get in the Old Testament, too. And uh, I'm pretty sure that doesn't everybody say that Moses married uh, somebody of a different race, and uh, God never condemned that or anything? So it's just, it's just stupid. This article's stupid, and uh, I don't think that Breaker's really qualified to teach. Honestly, <laughs> you can see his error; it's pretty horrendous. So, uh, and even Pastor Steven Anderson, with all the, you know, hate that he throws out there and stuff, he, he's not against interracial marriage. Even as bad as Steven Anderson is, he's not against interracial marriage. So anyways, thanks guys. Let me know what you think. And uh, Ed Finger's been trying to put pressure on him to either take down this article or to defend it. And I'm sure that Breakers had he's had uh, videos where he's went over this, but trying to put more pressure on him by making another video so more people can see that what he said about this. Thanks for watching. Sorry, it's a 40-minute video at this point, but God bless.